happy, happy Tuesday. You usually see me Mondays and Tuesdays, but Becca had to take the spotlight yesterday. I don't really remember why we did that, but I'm not sure Becca why either. decorated my KitchenAid mixer yesterday. And she loved it so much she left it here. I completely forgot. Well, here's what happened. At my house, <clears throat> when I have my sweet baby, I'm going to have a lot of visitors over. And I wanted to make a coffee bar for my visitors. Aww. So I'm putting it where my KitchenAid and my kind of baking area was because I'm not going to need it for a while. So it, the space is already filled up in my kitchen, so I didn't even notice that nothing was there. Um, yeah, it's also heavy as lead, but I'm going to take it home today. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. I'm so excited to be here. We're talking all things organization. How fun is all of this going to be? I, I've written down, wrote, I've written down, <laughs> I've written down a lot of really fun talking points and things as a, I'm not a professional in any sense of the word at like organizing or anything, but I do really enjoy keeping a really clean house. I feel like for, for me, it keeps my mind clear. I can't go to sleep if there's, I know it sounds crazy, but I really need my house clean all the time. <clears throat> I really strive to keep things nice and organized. And with having that crazy OCD part of my brain wired weird, uh, it's allowed me to kind of learn some things over the years, some little tips and tricks that I think you guys can uh, implement in your life to make organizing a little bit easier for you. So let me know where you're visiting from. We're having a really nice day here in East Tennessee. It's 61 degrees. It was raining earlier, much nicer now. The sun's popping out and drying up that rain. Uh, if you don't know who I am, first of all, welcome to Oakenland. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Rachel. I'm an owner and craft educator here. And Becca, the voice that you are going to be hearing through this live, she is also an owner and craft educator here. And she's going to be working the cameras, dropping links, and answering some questions for you guys. Yeah. Okay. So also, it's 2-22-22. We've heard about this today. <clears throat> so that's the date. There was some talk in the private Facebook group that you guys wanted me <clears throat> to uh, talk until 2.22. We have been challenged, and we do like a challenge. So I now, think it's probably going to happen. Just being honest, that's only a challenge to talk for four more minutes than my average. Did you know that, Becca? Rachel, that's true. That's, that's true. Only, it's that's only four, easy. four more minutes. So all of my lives are pretty much like an hour and 18 minutes. I don't know why. So four more minutes, that's nothing. Now, if you guys are like, well, what about a private Facebook group? I'm kind of intrigued about that. Here at Oakland Land, we do have an incredible membership. And if you would like to purchase it, it's actually on sale today. So <laughs> click the link down below. Becca's posting the link in the comments. And we can um, flag it for you to make sure that anybody can see it. I'll actually do that right now as well. But it's $20 off uh, for... President's Day is what it was for. We had like a little uh, sale going on. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely check that out. Um, and this will be good through Monday. Monday, So yes. you have to one, Monday. One week from yesterday. So if you are a founding Monday. flock member, we say this every time, do not purchase with this link. Do not no, do it. No, just hold off. Just hold FYI, off. Um, one of my friends, Julia, we got her to test out the link that we will be sharing. Um, everything is golden on it. So we'll be sharing that link today in the private Facebook group for you all. Yay. Yeah. Um, it's always nice to have testers to kind of make sure all the kinks are worked out of everything. But click that link, join. Not only do we have hundreds of cut files, but we have an amazing community um, over on the Facebook group. We have member-only videos and so much more coming your way. We always are trying to think of things to add to the membership to make sure that it is a fantastic opportunity. And the sale is on our yearly membership. However, we do have a monthly membership if it's just not in your budget, although you are saving some money today with that coupon code. But we totally understand that we do have a monthly membership and you are not, um, we, we don't hold anything back from either of our membership tiers. So whether you're a monthly member or a yearly member, you all get the same amount of benefits, yes. which is incredible. So let me know if you have any questions about that. We would love to gain some new amazing members today. Uh, but we're talking about organizing. <clears throat> It blew me away yesterday 
while Becca was decorating my KitchenAid, which looks amazing. If you didn't see the video, definitely go watch it after this. We dove into a really fun product that helps uh, create some water resistance, waterproof on stickers, and it's great. So Becca dove into that. We made some little bee cut files, or we used Becca's bee cut <coughs> file and put it on my KitchenAid. It's so sick. I cannot wait to take it home. It's so stinking cute. Uh, but I was really impressed and surprised about how many of you yesterday were really intrigued on ways to organize your craft room. Apparently, this is a big need. And trust me, we get it. Do we ever? Uh, especially if you're at home or if you work full time or if you have kids, life gets in the way and things get messy. And it's much easier to say, I'm going to go and empty out the dishwasher than it is to say, I'm gonna spend 20 minutes decluttering my craft room. We get it, we totally get it. Uh, but today we're gonna to be talking about ways you can organize, what you can use these organization uh, tips for, because also I want to make it clear in this video, while we do a lot of different types of crafting here at Oak and Lamb, there's a lot more diverse crafting areas that those of you guys at home can be in. Uh, sewing, mainly woodworking, things like that. Whereas here we have a lot of felt, glitter, paint, uh, spray paint, things like that. And of course, all of our Cricut stuff. We do Cricut quite a lot here. Um, so take these tips. Don't say, okay, well, they put spray paint in this, so that's all I can put in that. This is just an example of what you can use this for. If you guys in your different craft area specialty know you can use this for something important for you, please switch it out. There's a lot of very fun ways you can use this. It's a very diverse um, set of topics today that we're gonna be talking about. So hopefully you guys can gain a lot of knowledge from these tips. Um, so let me know um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. My brain works better when organized. Me too, Shay. I, <clears throat> I have to be organized, especially my home. I have to be organized. And then I can just sleep so much better knowing that every little nook and cranny in my house is organized. It's, it's great. So Jen said, I have so much cardstock. I'm, this is not verbatim because I can't find the comment. Oh, there it is. I have so much cardstock now. I need help for that. So Jen, yeah. um, we're going to be doing, a, and Rachel was going to talk about it, I'm sure, but a series of, event, of uh, organizational uh, yeah. videos and lives. So we're not talking about cardstock today, but we will in the future talk about some yeah. great products to store your cardstock We're going to hopefully do... <clears throat> like sections and be able to share with you solutions for the different sections of the craft room that you may have. Um, like maybe just Cricut storage or just cardstock storage, things for sewists that they can use uh, specifically. Today is just kind of really broad. I've got some tips written down about very broad ways that you can organize your home, your car, your craft space, really anything a little bit better. Um, but yes, like Becca said, we're gonna be doing a series on this hopefully answering all the questions within the series. And again, if there is any craft or anything like this, which is organization tips and tricks, anything like that that you all wanna see, leave them in the chat after the live is over and I go through there. I have a list, a running list, me and Becca make lists on what you guys want to see because that's what we love to do is make sure you guys are happy and satisfied and we want to teach you whatever you want to know. So let us know if you have any more questions for sure. Let me see here. Yes, hello, hello. I heard someone say it was snowing. That's not fun. Yes, they were in the plow truck with their husband and someone said, is he plowing you a road to Michael's or Joanne's? <laughs> <laughs> what a nice hubby that would be. I mean, honestly, honestly. Organizing is my favorite, <clears throat> Beth. I really love organizing things, I really do. Um, you can go overboard on it though and I, again, I have points for that. And if you guys are on TikTok these days, TikTok is notorious for going way overboard on organizing. I was telling Becca, where were we, Becca? I don't know. We were supply shopping somewhere. And we passed, it was, I think it was a Hobby Lobby of all places. We passed this container and it was little, like a little clear container and it had little slots for your eggs to go. And you're supposed to take your eggs by them take them out of the carton that they're in, put them in there and put them in the refrigerator. And I, 
that's the type of organization that I like to steer clear of simply because it takes a lot of money and it takes more effort and more upkeep in the long run. And when you are struggling to organize things as it is, the last thing you need is things to have to keep up with constantly that are a bit unnecessary. So having to refill an egg container that's in your fridge, even though you bought a perfectly good carton with it, those are the types of organizational things that we are going to try and steer clear of today. Kind of low maintenance, you don't have to do much with this because of, of course a lot of organizing is staying on top of it and the more items you have to stay on top of, the more things you have to continuously clean and continuously reorganize, it's going to become daunting. You're going to not want to do it anymore. Right, right. So we're trying to keep that <clears throat> to a minimum today, um, which is also a great point I wanted to talk about. Be really, really strategic about where you put things in your craft space. I don't even think I have that wrote down, but you want to make sure you're storing your products in the places where you're going to need it. If you barely do any woodworking, you don't need woodworking like eye level somewhere. You want to be able to use your space wisely, especially if you have a smaller craft room or you sh your bedroom is your craft room. You just have like a little craft desk or a craft nook. You want to make sure what you're going to be using every day is close by and what you're not going to be using every day is somewhere else that's still handy and accessible, but not taking up so much room because again, we're all about not having so much upkeep on things. That's when, again, you start losing motivation. You won't keep it clean. And trust me, I get it. It's really hard. You get in ruts sometimes and you're like, I'm just going to leave this here. I'll deal with it later and later and later and later. And I understand that. I sure do. Okay. I agree. Some organization can just be overboard. Absolutely. And again, like I mentioned, I think TikTok is one of the worst platforms about it. While they are very satisfying to watch, it makes us want to go to the container store and spend $3,000 reorganizing our pantry. When in reality, all we need to do is declutter a little bit, get everything in order, and that way we can know where everything is. You don't have to put your cereal in clear containers in order to call yourself organized, I promise. Um, and that's over to your craft room as well. That kind of bleeds over into the different areas of your life. Uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money to organize your craft space. It's just, it's not true. You can go to the dollar store or get things from art bins like we're using today and know that you're getting a good quality product for a decent price that you can keep your craft room organized with and you didn't spend a ton of money, honestly. Okay, Becca, have I missed anything? Mm, they're chatting. That's good. Yeah, no, I think we're good. Yeah, Jen, <clears throat> love your view, Rachel. Thank you. I... Again, I love to be organized and I don't have an endless bank account to be able to organize my home, but I can still go to bed at night knowing it's super organized with, without having spent all that money. Um, one thing I want to talk about, and again, let me know, we're going to go through kind of all these. I'm going to share with you the names of them. All these are linked below as well. Um, we're going to go through what we've used these for, what you could potentially use these for, and what I want to do today is get your minds kind of going. If you see something and I say, this is what we've used it for, what would you use it for? I want to see your replies in the comments because you don't know how your guys, all your comments can inspire other people in the comments to be able to organize their craft space. Because again, everybody is so different. Not everyone has all the same things in their craft room. At least I would hope not, or that would be super boring if we all right. crafted the same thing. Uh, so make sure you're talking about what you would need, what you would want in there. And as I was going through, I was surprised at how little of the things that are around us we use every day, mm -hmm. honestly. We have a lot in this studio because we, we teach in a lot of different platforms. If you guys don't know, we teach on Cricut, we teach on the Glowforge, we teach sublimation, woodworking, just basic DIYs, different types of home decor. We love experimenting with a ton of different things. We've done screen printing a lot. We work with resin a ton. So we have a lot in here, but it would blow your mind to know what we use every day could probably fit in a little bitty bin, honestly. Honestly, yeah. It's true. It's true. And again, that's not to say we don't use it. We use everything that we have. We try to make <clears> a point <throat> of that uh, because again, you don't want to spend a bunch of money on something you're not going to use, but you have to know what is worth keeping and what is worth not keeping. I know it's really hard to part with craft products, especially if you've bought them 
or maybe you got a bundle kit like if you bought your Cricut a lot of times they will run a sale on like bundles where you can get your machine and a bunch of different materials and while those are great usually you don't really need what's in them or you won't use them in the long run now getting rid of what you don't need gosh it's tricky and Beck and I have extreme um we how Becca how many times have we decluttered craft spaces oh gosh it's I, it's just continual now, now decluttering meaning <clears throat> went through donated what we didn't need yeah we've done it a lot how many times would you say honestly that we have weeks or months later been like darn I needed that I and shouldn't I have thrown that away yeah I yeah. mean I, I will admit there's been a couple times that I've been like, oh man, I should have kept that one blank or I should have kept that one tool or we shouldn't have thrown away those keychains, something like that. But it was not, it's not enough to outweigh not decluttering your craft space. I hope that makes well, sense. Well, and here's the other thing. A lot of times you were like, oh, I'll use that later. And so you put it up, but you forget about it. So you purchase it again. Like there, you can have too much. Yes. Um, and, and then have that issue because you just don't even know what you have. Yes. Yes. And ha just like Becca said, having too much stuff creates a problem in itself, which is that you don't know what you have because you have so much stuff. So Was that just, one of your points? No. Okay. So you just go and you buy more stuff, but you already have it, but you don't know because it's cluttered. And then you're in a vicious cycle of having... 20 bottles of orange spray paint because you keep hiding them from yourself because you think you don't have them. Or four boxes of chocolate Hershey bars, Julie. <laughs> but that, that's a different type of problem. You know? well, that's not really a that's problem. Like a it's challenge. not really a problem. Yeah, that's yeah. more like a challenge. <laughs> that's fine by me, yeah. <clears throat> Let me see. Oh, Connie, yes. I purchased art bins and ended up mounting them on the wall. Took, uh, took up less desk space. Also got bins from Dollar Tree and put them on my shelves and labeled each. Connie, these types of comments I absolutely adore. One thing I really love about art bins is almost everything you purchase can be mounted on the wall. Yeah. It comes with a mounting kit. But you don't have to. But you don't have to. Like this right here looks totally adorable sitting, but it has holes and comes with a mounting kit. You can mount it on the wall. So great. I do love that about this brand, Connie. I'm glad you did bring that up. Um, <clears throat> do I need to keep the box? Dana, do I need to keep the boxes my Cricut machine and heat presses came in? I'm saying no. My husband, who is a gamer and collects keyboards and... Do you say mice if it's more than one mouse for a computer? He collects mice? Mouses? He collects mice. Multiple mouses. Multiple yeah, most, no, it would be mouses. Mice? Mouses? He collects multiple mouses? Well... He's wow, got, you've stumped me. He's got lots of gamer things for his computer, and he refuses to part with any of the boxes. Now, here's my rule. <clears throat> I will, I, myself, I would keep a box for a month. You know, see if there's anything wrong with the Cricut machine. If there's something wrong with it, you have to box it back up and send it back, or hopefully you'll be on the phone for, with Cricut customer service for four hours and waste half your day. Either way, you might have to send your Cricut back. You might have to. Now, Easy Presses, to be honest, I've, we've never had to send an Easy Press back. They kind of are, those are easy. I wouldn't keep those. Um, but my husband would say, mice. they say mice. 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 Yes. Mice. I'm sorry, guys. You Listen. We didn't you. know. We knew that's what you say for the, the little animals. But we didn't know if that was also true for, for computer like, mouses. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. mice. Yes. Thank you. But all of the mice. <clears throat> The mouse boxes, all of the keyboard boxes, he collects them. All of his headphone boxes, he loves them. He thinks they're decoration. Um, so regardless if you want to save your boxes or not, totally up to you. What I would say is put them somewhere that you know where they are, but you don't have to look at them. If you have an attic, if you have a garage, if you have a little space under your staircase, stick them there for a while. Next time you go looking for them, if you're like, hey, I've had my cricket for a year now. I don't need this box. Please throw your boxes away. Um... I use my downstairs kitchen and put all the supplies in the cabinets. Long table, 50 inch TV. Yeah. Downstairs kitchen. Oh, uh, so you like have an upstairs kitchen and a downstairs kitchen. That's a great little solution. If you don't need that kitchen down there, put craft supplies in it for sure. For sure. 
Donnie doesn't get rid of boxes ever. Julie, maybe it's like a... It's a man thing. No, it's a man thing because Wayne is the same way. A anytime I'm like, get rid of that, he's like, we need it. I'm like, it we have 14 boxes in our attic that are taking up half of the space. We're never going to use these. We don't, don't even... Well, we have boxes for things we don't even have anymore. What? Yes. What? Yes, Becca, because he's forgotten that we had him, the box. Tell him to. It's a problem. I would throw him away while it's he was gone. It's a problem. Gone. I do. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Just have like a burn party in the backyard. I try honestly. not to go to the attic because like there, I hate going up there. And then he actually <laughs> did a decent job in this attic when we moved into this house of organizing it. So I, yeah, the other one. Whew, no. Oh, it's bad. I got a big cart from Harbor Freight and put all of my big printer and heat presses on it so I don't have to lift it around. I just push the cart around. Again, guys, I'm loving these comments. Same. These are amazing. I, you guys are getting my wheels turning. Hopefully, we're inspiring you and you're inspiring other people. But again, that's great. Our um, Glowforge is on a... Is this Husky or is this... That's a y Yukon. Yukon. Wait, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. That is Husky. This one? Yes, you're right. Okay, so, and these are Yukon. These yes, yes. Right here. Um, all, also, I do recommend those. We The tool chests. Ours are not even full. They're great. They're great for craft products. Um, but I love that you're like, I don't want to break my back. I have all the heavy stuff on that, and I cart it around. That's great. I love that. Um, continue to let me know your thoughts on this kind of stuff, for sure. My stepmom paid for a storage unit to store empty boxes. Oh my gosh. Okay, Stacey. that's okay. You know, Stacey. to each their own. Yeah, I don't want to say anything about that. I'm sure she's a very nice lady <laughs> with a very big problem. <laughs> I repurpose small boxes like mystery box shipping cartons. They're great for storage since they take up less space and are easy to stack. Okay, so you put things in them to store them. That I can get behind. Right. I can get behind that for sure. Um, Becca, doesn't your husband watch all these videos? Oh, yeah. He doesn't yeah, he, care. He, he I'd doesn't, say it to his care. face. He doesn't know. He, no. Yeah, no. Wayne doesn't care. No, if you think of go with the flow, <clears throat> the person who just pops in my mind is Wayne, honestly. Um, I want to join. Do you have to pay for yearly to get the discount? Betsy, you do... For this sale, yes. Now, you are already saving quite a bit of money even without a discount because while we do not separate perks from our monthly to yearly members, the per the one perk you will get being a yearly versus a monthly is you will be saving some money from paying us all at once. And then, of course, of course we have that $20 off sale on top of that. So that's Prez, P-R-E-S 20 is the coupon code. Please use that and join today. It's an amazing, amazing community. Trust me, you will love it. You will love it. Uh, the box debate has really, has really taken off. It, it really did, has. It's something. It's quite something. I didn't think that this was going to. Yeah. I didn't think that was really going to start something. Uh, but to end my first point is please, I know it's super hard, get rid of what you can. Now, I don't want to say get rid of what you don't need. Because I know there's people who are aspiring to screen print and might have the stuff for it. And while you might not be using it right now, you technically might need that in the future. So you don't also want to go into kind of open-minded, kind of humbling yourself. Like, Rachel, have you really sewn that much in the past year? The answer is no. So why don't we put the sewing machine on Facebook Marketplace and sell some of this fabric? You know, things like that, things like that. So don't go in being like hoarder mentality because you want to be able to use your craft space in a more efficient way. And the way that you do that, number one, the first thing is to declutter. Declutter, get rid of what you don't need, donate it. Ask if a friend wants it. Um, you can donate to their bad habit, <laughs> anything like that. Um, okay. I also want to say, say whenever you're organizing, now again, these points can be taken for your home, your office, your craft space, your car, anything. Start slow. Start slow. It's so overwhelming when you're sitting here and you're like, I'm going to organize my entire craft room because it's really just not attainable if you have that mentality. Now, a couple things that you can do when starting slow is set a timer. We talked about this yesterday, um, and I'm not taking credit for this. I did see it on TikTok, but... It's also kind of like a duh thing, but a lot of people don't think about it. Set a timer for 20 minutes. Tell your husband, tell your kids, let your dog out, 
whatever you need to do. And then don't have any more distractions. Set a timer for 20 minutes, get in your craft room, do what you can for 20 minutes. Once your timer is up, if your brain is foggy and you're overwhelmed, that's it. Good job for the day. You got an A plus, thumbs up, and then you can go and do something else. If the 20 minutes are up and you're like, I'm really inspired, I'm really motivated, I wanna do more, set the timer again, keep setting the timer um, until you can't do it anymore, until you lose motivation. Because nothing is, nothing's more counterproductive than working on something with no motivation, honestly. That's why I did such, such a bad job in school, I'd say so, because I was definitely not motivated enough. Oh, let me see. Thanks for permission to throw away boxes. Whitney, if you needed a sign to throw away your boxes, take this. Take this as your sign. Please do. Please throw it all away. Um, another thing you can do for starting slow, if you don't want to set a timer or if you want to add this onto setting a timer, is pick a section. Because again, you walk in the room and you're overwhelmed by all of the mess. Pick a section and be like, I'm going to work on my sewing corner or I'm going to work on my paint corner. Just go somewhere, start slow. I know you can kind of get into, I don't know, a mess of things when you're opening bins and clearing out doors, but it's very necessary. Start in a corner if you're super overwhelmed. If setting a timer still seems a bit daunting, set a timer, pick a corner for sure. Um, number three, this is kind of, again, a duh, but if you don't think about it or you don't do it properly, you're just not gonna get things done. And that is make sure that you're setting aside time to clean. You, again, you might think, well, duh, I'm gonna you know, empty the dishwasher right before I go to bed or I'm gonna wash these dishes right before bed. But set, set aside time to do that task so that you're not doing it when you should be asleep or you're not doing it when you should be uh, going over your kids' homework with them. Say, okay, well, I don't have anything here. I'm off work that day. Or when I come home, I can make sure the kids are fed and then I'll go in the craft room and work on that for a bit. Make sure you're setting aside time. Add it into your weekly schedule. It will make it that much more likely for you to do it for sure. Okay, let me see if I have missed anything else. This is such a good way to help people get unstuck. Kevin and Penny LCT. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, I think the biggest part of it for people is the beginning. It's, it's hardest to start. Once you start, you get your feet in there, you start doing it, you realize it's not that bad and you can just kind of take it slow. But getting started is the hardest part. So again, this is your sign to throw away boxes and this is your sign to start decluttering and organizing your craft room. There's a lot of fun products that you can use to do that. And we're going to go over some today. Um, I started with one product when I set up my craft room. I organized that before I could move on. It worked for me. Carol, love that. I love that. A TN Jenny, 30-day challenge. Get rid of one item one day, two items on day two, three items on day three. I love that. I love that. Look how smart you guys are. This is amazing. You guys are awesome. I'm going to divide my organizing by craft. Yeah, do that. Organize it by craft. Especially, like I said, if you're like us and you have a ton of different craft supplies going on. Some people only have Cricut supplies. Some people only have woodworking supplies, sewing supplies here and there. Um, let me see. You can get so much done in only 15 minutes. Monette, you would not believe how much you can get done in 15 minutes. Do not sell yourself short. Do not sell your time short. There's only so much time, waking time in the day. And you can get a lot done if you set a timer and you're motivated to do it. Um, I used to tell my daughters to clean one corner, then move on to another. Again, great. Yes, starting in a section. My vinyl rolls are starting to get out of control. That is a problem a lot of us have, for sure. Um, I don't love vinyl rolls. Becca, would you agree? Same. Yeah. We don't love vinyl rolls. We like vinyl sheets or, or big rolls. We have a lot of these big rolls, <clears throat> which are harder to store, but we only have them in black and white. The rest of them we have in sheets, a 12 by 24 sheets, 12 by 12 sheets. Um, it's where it's at. We get all of our vinyl from 143vinyl.com. It's great. The color selection is amazing. Shipping is really fast. Um, okay, so... We've went over so far, get rid of what you don't need and start slow. Um, this is kind of along the lines of don't, you don't have to spend a ton of money on storage solutions, but I want to reiterate 
don't buy storage solutions that aren't right for your craft space. And you might be a little bit confused about that. Um, just to be honest, if you have a table, if this is your craft table, you don't have anything else, you might have like a cart underneath here. This right here is not what you need, okay? Correct. Because this takes up so much room. This would be classified as something that's not right for your craft space. Um, that being said, if you have a whole craft room and you have like a table dedicated to vinyl storage or felt storage, this might be a really good option for you. You have to make sure that what you're purchasing, you need in your craft space. You don't wanna buy a ton of these if you don't have a ton of places to set them or a ton of places to hang them on the wall. Yeah, I was gonna say, even about that right there, you can hang those on the wall. So if you have wall space, yes. lateral storage space is very, very handy. Yeah, oh, yes. That's why Art Bin is so great. Yes, yeah. because again, all of this, this comes off. <clears throat> so this piece in the middle, you drill in to these. Drill it in the wall. Again, it comes with all of these options. It comes with everything in the kit when you buy it uh, to be able to hang this on the wall. Like Becca said, storage going up. Vertical storage is extremely helpful when you have a small craft space. You wanna maximize every little inch of it. And I know some of you are really into making your craft spaces cute mm -hmm. on the walls, but think about cute versus functional and see how you can mesh them. The wall behind me right now, extremely cute, extremely functional. Me and Becca grab stuff off this wall 24 seven and it's absolutely adorable if I can honk Becca's horn for her. Uh, and Anna, they worked very hard on that wall. And yeah, I'm a huge fan of, of pegboards. Yes, huge peg, fan. pegboards are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Let me see here. But like I was saying, I keep getting off task. You, you have to know if they're right for you, if they're right for your craft space. Now, excuse me, right for you and your craft space could be different things. Again, you might have extremely expensive taste, but is that really necessary? No. So that means that that type of organization is not right for you. If you have uh, simple storage solutions that are right for your craft space, they'll fit where you want them to fit, that's what you need. You don't wanna go out and buy some kind of $100 pack of storage bins that, that won't fit in your drawers. Make sure you measure your drawers if you're wanting to put storage in your drawers. I can't tell you how many times I've eyeballed the drawers, went to the container store and been like, oh, that will totally fit. Totally does not totally does not fit and also if you have drawers you're wanting to organize measure them all different directions put all those measurements in your phone take a measuring tape with you to the store that way you can see not only well, will these fit in the drawer but can they fit how many can i fit side by side in the drawer will they fit nicely in the drawers they're going to be a little gap on the side these are all things that you can do to maximize your storage space while making sure that you're not going to buy an excess amount of what you need. I think a lot of people do that as well. Um, I know me personally, I have a lot of organizers for drawers that I haven't used and don't use and they're just at my house. They're just sitting there, just sitting there. I have a wall of pegboard that I'm not even using. Uh, Romo, you have to use that pegboard. Listen, it's amazing. It's great. Uh, let me see. I've been taking things to work that I no longer need and use. I need a pegboard. Absolutely, you do. Um, Becca, where is the best place for them to get a pegboard? I love Ikea pegboards. And they're pretty <clears throat> cheap. Yeah, and the accessories are really great right now. Well, when we were doing the studio, um, I had to take all of the accessories, all of the colorful accessories that you, like the trays and the cups and stuff that you yeah. see on the pegboard are, are from my pegboard at home and you can't buy them anymore. So I'm gonna have to get colorful ones. Anyway, it was hard to find them, um, even white ones when we did this in October. Um, I think they're more available now, but you may have to search Amazon even. Uh, the actual brand name is, it, I'm not gonna even say it, I'm gonna no. spell it. It's S-K-A-D-I-S. Um, so look up that brand name. And then a lot of yeah. 3D printing companies have started making like hooks and things like that that go in those specific uh, pegboards. So check those out. Also, an option is spray painting them. You can totally spray paint You can, them. yeah. Um, Especially now, if you're not gonna touch them a lot because they won't chip badly exactly if you're not gonna, gonna touch say. them. If you're gonna use them a ton, be careful with that. Maybe put a little bit of a, a semi-gloss or satin sealer on that. 
uh, because we all know anything that's slick that you put spray paint on, it's gonna wanna chip up on you. Right. On my pegboard, I had white trays that I spray painted this color right here. And was it this color? Sure. Something like this color. And they haven't chipped because I haven't used them. I just set things on there for It's just for pretty. For decoration. Yeah. So pretty. Uh, mommy cares. For some reason, organizing is not the problem. It's keeping it organized that's the problem. This, first of all, thank you for admitting it. The first row, the first step to recovery is admitting you have a problem. You're not wrong. <laughs> Listen, that is one thing that I do want to get through your head today is to only organize in the way that you can upkeep it. That's why I am so against the TikTok style of organizing where they take everything out of their pantry. I mean, we're talking like flour, pasta, cereal, nuts, and they put everything in a clear container that's gorgeous and they set it in their pantry. It's not sustainable to me. Well, uh, well, yeah, especially with your lifestyle. Think about your yes. lifestyle. If you're a crazy working full-time mom um, who is never home and barely has time to even wash her face and clean her own clothes, you're likely not going to have time to keep things organized you're in that You're not going to keep putting yeah. your fresh box of pasta in the clear container. When it's easier to just throw your pasta in the, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now, does everything need a spot? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. It's 100%. But that is what I'm saying. Again, I love that mom and we're not said speaking that. against that type no, of organization. Look, I think it's beautiful. I think it. Listen, it is gorgeous. I'm envious yeah. of it. Okay, first of all, it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of time to do that. But the upkeep for my life, it's not sustainable for me. And I think that's a big problem. Is that we go through and we we hit a wall and we're like, that's it. I'm gonna spend five hundred dollars and get all this and organize my craft room and I'm gonna be done and it's gonna be beautiful. That's not it, okay? Every time you roll up a piece of felt and you place it in this thing, guess what? When you take one out, you gotta roll another one up and place it in there. If that's too hard for you to do, don't organize it like that. If you don't wanna have, whoa, if you don't wanna have like 12 by 12 storage boxes stacked up that you have to like pick up and set one to the side to open one, if that's too much for you, don't do it because you're not gonna make that a habit. You're just Correct. not. Yeah. Um, but again, like Becca said, this is not like beat you down hour where I'm like, you're doing it wrong. This is just kind of opening your eyes. Do you need to go that route? Do you need to do things so drastically if you're not going to be able to upkeep it? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay, let me see. We've personally found that drawers are very convenient for us. Even well, also with, even with card stock storage. Them. Yes. You can shut yeah. them. That's good. But it's easier. We have, we have worked with like deep totes and things like that and the, the like 12 or 14 by 14 inch totes that were how tall were those totes Rach? 12 the ones with the cardstock yeah in them We've worked with totes and you, you have to dig into the bottom of them. You don't know what you're, you're working with. You don't know what's in there. You can't see through them. Uh, so we don't, we don't recommend that, but we love drawers. Drawers um, are good. The drawers especially really good. shallow drawers. Yes. Do you know why? Yes. Cause you can't pile them full of crap. We've worked with bins too. All yeah. we had, and you guys remember I meant this. bins, not totes. I'm sorry. I didn't mean bins. Oh, you meant yeah. bins. Yeah. Oh, well then we're yeah. on the exact same yes. page. Yes. When we worked at MGL, all we had was like bins that you'd pull out of like the cube, cube organizers is exactly what they were. And what would happen? Everything sinks to the bottom of those. They look good though. They, they do look good. Not knocking that. But you dig and dig for what you yeah. need. Then guess what? You cut your hand, you come out and your hand's all blue from ink and you're like, what? What is happening? I have a picture on my phone right now. I look at it sometimes when I need a good laugh. And it's Becca holding a ball of yarn that has at least, at least 15 different yarns intertwined oh, in it. And she's holding it. Because you know what? That has wasted so much money. If she sat there and untangled it, it would waste so much time. But I did she, it. She Did you do it? I thought I did. you cut it. No, I untangled that thing. Not it was, worth it. It was... No. Not worth it. Because I'm sure they got tangled up in two days the next time. And again, things like that happen and you don't know they're happening subconsciously. You open the door, you shut the door. You open the door, you shut the door. And then one day you're like, oh my gosh, this ball of yarn is four foot wide and needs a name, you know? So again, things like that, make sure you're thinking about what you need. Now, I did love those bins for spray paint. Those were good they were. for yeah, spray they were. So again, think about the crafts that you do. Some can be much handier for some crafts than other crafts. Stacking our Benzie felt in those bins was a nightmare. You, like Becca said, you couldn't see through them. 
you never knew what colors were where. With felt, they all stick to each other. So if you want to pick out a piece that's in the bottom, you just pick that out. No, 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 no. You've wadded up all of your big, pretty stack of felt. You know the drill, guys. You know the drill. I love untangling yarn. Yeah. Jenny, that's okay. I love weeding vinyl. I think it's therapeutic. I understand that. I really don't like bins. They become a mess after a while. Rachel, you're right. I hate digging stuff out of the bins. Yes, digging things out of those bins. And, and again, that's what me and Becca were saying. That's why shallow drawers are so great is because you can't really, you can't put that much in them and what's in them has to be organized or it won't shut because it's so shallow. So it kind of forces you to stay organized in a way. So really quickly, Shauna said, um, I'm trying to find the little paint bottle storage in the link. What's the name of it? So Shana, Rach, was that one of the ones that was not linkable? Yep. So Artman has sent us, and I don't know if this is one of them or not. I can message them afterward and find out. But Artman I couldn't find it. let us know that they were sending us some products to test and kind of review uh, that were newer. So I don't know if this maybe isn't available quite yet or not. Um, maybe take a screenshot or we can send you a picture or something like that. If yeah. you want to personally contact Artbin and ask them about it, um, that would be fine as yeah. well. But we've linked everything that we had a link to. And this comes with a bunch of these. Yes. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll show all these on the overhead camera for yeah. sure. Okay. Uh, my last point, and then we can show these on the overhead camera and get some questions answered is you need to try and create good habits. And I don't have a bunch of points on what these good habits are because we're such different crafters and I want everybody not to feel like you're doing it wrong if you don't do it the way that I say to do it. That could be, if you're done with a craft, put your products you're not using anymore away immediately. That could be setting aside time every single week to make sure that your craft space is organized. Or that could even just be once a month going through there, throwing away, donating what you do not need, do not <clears> use anymore. Just create some healthy habits. And again, if you're schedule driven, if you love looking at your calendar, if you love writing things on your calendar, pencil in time to keep your craft space clean. Just like you do with your house. If you're like blocking off this afternoon to clean my house, do the same thing for your craft space. It deserves just as much respect because that is where you go to de-stress. You want to go in there. You don't want to get overwhelmed by the dirt or the mess in there. Make sure you're putting attention into keeping it clean. Um, okay. Let me see. I'm going to put this to the side and then we are going to go overhead and I'm going to share with you. I have all of the stickers for these, but again, this I'll show here because you can't really see this on the overhead camera, but this is where's the box at? over there it. next to my, um, underneath. Is it underneath there? I think oh. of course I didn't bring it over here. Why would I do that? Thanks, Becca. You're welcome. This is the rotating vinyl storage tower. tower. Um, I don't have vinyl in here. Number one, because we don't have near enough vinyl to fill this thing. Shocking. And number two, yeah. shocking. And number two, we here at Open Lamb don't adore rolling our vinyl. Someone asked about it. We don't love it. I have Benzy felt in this thing. Now again, is this the most practical way to store your felt? Maybe, maybe not. It totally depends on you. You have to make your own call. You have to make your own choice. You might see some of these and be like, that's genius. Or you might see some and be like, that's a little silly, but I know what I can do with that better. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the rotating vinyl storage tower. They have a couple different types of this. One doesn't rotate. And again, both of them can be mounted to the wall, which is great. Okay, now. I'll show you guys this. This is the tray someone was commenting on, and I have more in the floor. Let me I love this it. particular storage item. Yeah, for sure. Okay. It comes with all of these. One pack comes with all of these. Uh, they stack as well. They stack just like this. And then, as you can see, they all have holes on them, and they come with the mounting kits that you can mount these to the wall. How handy is that? Now here, Charlotte, we still have the box because we opened it this morning. Yes, we do yes. still have, oh, was someone doing that to me? Yes. Was someone yes. calling me out? Here you can see all the colors, yes, Mary. But here's what this is called. Of course, I ripped it right where I didn't need to, but this is the two-in-one wall and desk organizer. 
it has one back support bin, which has like two, and then three single bins. So this is the back support bin. These are two stuck together. And again, this is a really good height for this glitter that we love or for little paint bottles. And then again, these can be stacked on the wall or they, these can be stacked on something or placed on the wall. And I just like that it's clear acrylic. It's not fancy. Uh, it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. So these are really good solutions for a ton of different things. Again, we just put paint and glitter in ours, put whatever you want in yours. Um, one thing too to note, whenever you get things like this that you're not really sure what's gonna fit in here, try different things before you land on one. You know, like you can see, well, okay, I can fit two in here, but I can't fit two side by side. Is there anything that I could put in this that would fit better side by side so I wouldn't feel like I was wasting room? You know, go through in your mind and think about things like that, how you could do it more efficiently. Uh, so that's that one. It is a two-in-one wall and desk organizer. I love that one. Love I love it. this one too. <clears throat> nice and nice and handy. I love that someone was calling me out on keeping the boxes. That's you guys are hilarious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Keep that mounting kit for sure. Now a couple that we didn't use today are these two. And I, I do love them, but again. I didn't want to like throw things in here that we didn't need in here. I wanted to be able to share with you things that you are going to want to uh, see. So this one is a photo and craft supply organizer set. And these numbers right here, if you go on their website or anything like that, you can actually add those numbers into the website and it helps you find it. Uh, but this has these little storage containers in it. And I think they're adorable. Now again, marketed for photos, but you can put anything you want in here. If you have little bitty scrap pieces of quilt that you want to put in here, if you have uh, little bitty bottles of paint you want to put in here, um, whatever you want to do. This would also be good for uh, vinyl storage, scrap vinyl pieces. If you have small scrap vinyl pieces, this would be great for that. But I love that all of these are here. They're easy to grab. It doesn't take a lot of effort to do that. So we love those. That's a great option. Another good option is these. These are little stackable bins. Now you can place these in different things. So if I had this, which by the way is like a lid. If you're a jewelry maker, this would be really good for you. Yes, yeah. these are little, little stackable bins and they're so cute. This is the lid to where our spray paint was. So it kind of goes over there like a cover, uh, which is actually for cards and envelopes as you can see here. We're using organized. it a different way. And we're using it a different way, which is totally fine. Please use them how you want to use them. But you could take these, put them in here, stack them in here. I mean, again, build your own. This is not like a one size fits all type thing. You don't have to use it for what the name is. Lord knows we don't have any photos that we want to use for this, but these little containers are great for other things. So do think about that. This one is called the Super Satchel Bins. It is um, just adorable. Look how stinking cute. I love that everything is clear. Everything is easy to see. This again is the photo and craft supply organizer set. And this is the lid to the, is this what it is? Oh no, it's right here. Here it is. This is the lid to where we had our spray paint. So I'll bring that over here and show you guys. And I said those would also be great for woodworkers for nails and nuts and bolts and screws oh gosh, and stuff. Yes. Washers. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is where we have some of our spray, some of our most used spray things. So we have some colors that we use often, some Loctite, some polyurethane, really easy grab and go things. So this is what we have and this is what it's called. Card and photo organizer. And it's, it's kind of big because again, it comes with this lid, which of course, if you have this and you're like, oh, what I want doesn't fit in there, use this for something else. Because this goes over this, but of course it doesn't fit. Use this for something else. This would be a great little bin for something. And then it's kind of like you have two organi organization solutions in one, which is super neat. So again, that's what that one's called. It came with little dividers, which are actually stinking adorable. Look at these. Look how cute little dividers that you can ride on and it stays in there. Like, let me take these out and show, show you what I mean. I'll take a couple out. So if you can see down the bottom, you might be able to see. I can see. There's little, like, I don't know, little raised parts where you can like divide this. Mm -hmm. So you can divide that for other things. But again, I threw spray paint in it because we craft with spray paint more than we craft with other things. So just another different way that you can use these. 
um, A2, A7, A9 cards and envelopes, things like that. If you're a card maker, you know that all those are just sizes of cards. You know what? If you also are a sewist, I, I would have to check, but I'm pretty sure it would fit. And you get like the little fat quarter um, bundles of fabric then those would stack up really nicely in that as well. In fact, I have a bunch of Lori Holt things that are folded up like that, and I'm kind of thinking if we don't use that here, I may steal it and take it home. That's a really good idea. Yes, it would, I, think it would, I think it would store really nicely with That's that. That's an adorable idea. Um, <clears throat> so, like, two in one here. Double trouble here. Love that. Next, we'll talk about this one. This is, in my mind... The jewelry maker's dream. Yeah. This right here. Um, now, I didn't even fill this up because, again, um, I didn't want to, like, I don't know. I want to leave some space for some imagination here. These are little containers of glitter. Fits in there really well. We have all of our screen printing confetti. Uh, fits in there well. We have extra blades and some extra blades and tools for our Cricut here. Have some beads. We have some measuring tapes. And these come with 18 dividers you divide this where you want to so you can take these and say well i want to i want to add one right here all you got to do is pop that in boom another divider add these wherever you want you can make these a little bitty you can make these like this one this has no dividers in it it's just glitter take these add little dividers like how handy is this and it's what three two two and a half inches off the ground like it's really flat Really nice, the snaps are nice. I mean, it's good quality. When I was a kid, I had one of these because friendship bracelets made out of embroidery thread were really, really popular. Oh, yes. And Anne and I that. had quite a collection of embroidery thread. And so we would get the little cards and roll them up on the card and then you would organize it in something like this with those little pieces. I love it. Yeah, so if you embroider, that's fantastic. You probably have already thought of that too. Yeah. But yeah, but it's amazing. I love things like this. So beads. simple. Lots of beads, yeah. So simple, so easy. Um, snapshot, it's really nice and secure. This one is literally called Solutions Box, and it is the one that is linked down below. It is a large size with 18 dividers, so we love that. This one is probably my personal favorite. And you guys might be thinking, wow, Rachel, yeah, that's so exciting. Look, it holds your paintbrushes. This does not just hold paintbrushes. This is a brush drying rack and it has little silicone teeth in it here to be able to set your brushes on and dry them. But I'm going to take these out because while you can also set your brushes and dry them, this has like seven different uses. I love it. So this is what it looks like. And again, you just set your brushes down in there to dry, but you can also take this out. Look at this. You're painting, set your brush down. You're painting over here. You're using another color. Set your brush down. It has these little grooves. Stop it. That is your brushes. Cool. Oh, you think I'm done, Becca? That's not all. <laughs> I sound like an infomercial. You do. Hilarious. You do. Um, you can take this, flip it around. Guess what this is? A cleaner? A cleaner. Stop it. You clean Stop your it. brush with this. Uh, because it's all silicone, you know? And if water drips down, because this is how you have it to dry your brushes. Water drips down in there. You just take this and rinse it off because the water will catch in this little tray. And then this is where you can clean this. Now, I have to say, as someone who still never wears makeup, but who has makeup, yeah. I own makeup, yeah. this would also be a fantastic brush cleaning mat for your cosmetic oh. brushes. Super nice. Put a little bit of soap on there, clean those off. Um, but how cool is that? So not only do you get to set them in there to dry, but while you're painting, you can pop them here. I can't tell you how many times I've had different colors of paint that I'm using. Set the brushes down and it roll into the other brush and get paint on it. I cannot tell you how bad I hate that. So that is, I just, I, I just love this. Look at all these little nooks and crannies. Don't you love it? Look, how fun is that? So I love that. That's probably my favorite little tool here. But yeah, you just place your, you just play, place your little brushes in here. Allow them to dry when you're done crafting. It's How so funny. Fun. We have so many people who are saying that today's live is so on time for them. I'm so glad. I know. It's super exciting. That makes me so, so, happy. so I'm excited. Like I was gonna ask, are you guys interested? Are you excited about us doing? Because we're we're doing a whole organizational like rehaul on the studio. Yeah. Um, not even rehaul because it never happened. Like 
it's it's not like we're redoing it anyway it sounds like you were really excited to see what we do and we'll, we'll take before and after pictures because we've never actually shared what our oh my gosh it's embarrassing what our current shelves look like it is humiliating but we'll I don't definitely even like looking over there no one day i just started throwing a fit and like <laughs> throwing things away it was terrible listen some it needed to happen <clears throat> It needed yeah. to happen. Yeah. Um, but this is what this is called, the brush drying rack. This, unfortunately, is not one I could find the link for, which means it's brand spanking new. So Yeah, so email Artman about it if you want one. Email Ask Artman. him when it will be available. Yeah. Um, you could use that rack for epoxy pins, too. You could. <gasps> you could put, the, like, the sticks down. That's a great idea. Now you're thinking. Yeah. Okay. Now this one. Oh, this is last but not least. This is... A little organizer and it is called a desktop organizer now here you can see they are showing some Cricut tools in here unfortunately our Cricut tools don't fit really well in here and I'll demonstrate I mean you know we're just sharing here it it doesn't fit like it fits but it doesn't stand it up. fits but it doesn't stand up in here the pins go down much farther um, so this you might want to use it like if you do a lot of pens or if you um, work with colored pencils a lot, you can use colored pencils with this. Um, but again, we can't find that these fit. They don't fit really well down there. And that's fine. Use this for something else if you want to. You can store your paintbrushes It's got some good too. storage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some good storage up front. We have an XL scraper tool up there. I mean, just whatever you want. So this is the desktop organizer. It has 24 slots and then a little storage area. Um, so I think that's the last one that we have today uh, to showcase. But I want to know, what are your all thoughts? Let me know how you've enjoyed these. Let me know which one's your favorite. I do not know why that brush drying rack is my favorite. But I love this one. I, I don't know why it made me so happy. It made me so happy. Uh, let me know your thoughts, though. <clears throat> this is so informative today. Amanda, I'm so glad you think so. Um... Megan said, um, you can tell that real crafters help to design each and every one of these items. And yes, it's absolutely true. I had a phone call with Artman. Um, and one of the things that impressed me was they were basically saying, you know, we want to be able to send you some things and you give us honest feedback about, yes, yes, you intended it for this, but it really works better this way, or it would have been better if you did this. So like, and, and they're not just looking for cricket crafters or anything like that. I mean, it, it's, it's all different genres of crafting, which they were really excited that that's what we offer here at Oak and Lamb. So, yeah. uh, it's, it's a really fun partnership, like kind of how it worked out. Um, so we're really excited and, and I say partnership, but it's not like we don't, we don't get any kickback, um, for, nope. for selling we these items. We just really hope to we're, have this place in tip top organized yeah. shape. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and in a way that works for <clears throat> us, you know, just, just like the points I was talking to you about today, we don't want to purchase, use, advertise anything that we wouldn't have here in our craft space that we can't use properly. And we want to make sure that you guys know just how we do it. It's not how you have to do it. There is so many different types of crafting, so many different craft supplies. I mean, oh my gosh, if we went through every craft supply we've ever used, we'd be here for weeks and storing all of those is so dependent on you and how you use them and how often you use them. So it really just depends. We weren't here today to say, buy this for this, buy that for that. It's just, here's Showing some you options. some ideas, yeah. Here's some options, here's some ideas. We hope to get you guys inspired and you all have inspired us in the comments as well. You guys are amazing at that for sure. Yes, we love all the wall hanging things. <clears throat> we love vertical storage. Vertical storage is amazing. My parents, <clears throat> their basement, um, you guys know they had a fire two years ago and we got rid of everything. It was, the whole house was gutted and rebuilt, so the basement was completely empty, and they have bought no basement storage. It's been almost two years. They have no basement storage, and I'm trying to convince mom to buy a bunch of the, like, metal husky um, shelves yeah, yeah. for down there, and I told her if she gets them, I can come down there with her and help her organize them in some bins and label the bins and things like that because I really do love to organize things. And, you know, I hope that I hope that mom takes me up on it because I really want to help organize. But again, it's daunting. She works full time. She's got a grandbaby with another one on the way. And 
It's a busy time. Life gets busy, but take help when it's offered and definitely take what I've said this, uh, this live stream. Go slow. Get rid of what you don't need. Make sure the storage solutions that you purchase are right for you. Baby steps. Baby steps in there. Pick a corner. Set a timer. Make sure you set aside time to, to do your thing. Yeah. Um, ribbon storage solution. So we, we will talk about that eventually. Artman actually has some solutions for ribbon storage that are pretty great. Um, I also love a dowel rod system. So you could get like a dowel rod and put the spools of ribbon or is that what you call them? A spool? Is it a spool of ribbon? Your thing of ribbon? <laughs> on the dowel rod and hang it from the pegboard. Now you've got um, me. I know, I know. Anyway, yes, the, I've, I've put up our join the flock. Oh, um, don't thing. think I haven't yes, seen they're it. They're loving it. They're loving it. Do yeah. you not? Yeah. Everyone has uh, sent me screenshots and said, look at this. I can't believe like that they've saw on social media that Becca has advertised. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, stunning. But like the... Like our little banner says, we're having a sale for a week uh, for President's Day. Join the flock today, $20 off. Use that code PREZ, P-R-E-S, 20, and join our yearly membership. We are always adding new cut files, adding new member-only content, new resources, amazing things for you guys. We just want to pour into our members and make sure that each of you um, feel the community because our community is unmatched, honestly. We have the best group of crafters in the world Hands down for sure. Hands down. Yes, it's a spool of ribbon. It's a spool of ribbon. Okay, good. Sometimes yes. I sometimes I think words in my head, but they don't really sound right. That happens a lot, actually. Oh, I could be talking about mice. How do you sell, how do we sell our or store our alcohol markers? Our alcohol markers? They're right here. Right here. And then we also have a drawer. It's in the top right drawer um, that has let me take this off so they can see it. Oh, here it is. Yeah. There probably has <laughs> a bunch of other crap in there, too. <laughs> oh, it has extra... Ta yeah. Like I said, we're not very organized here. But we will be. We have good intentions. We do have excellent intentions, and that's okay. We'll get there eventually. We'll get there. Okay, so we have 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes to sit here and chat. Do you think we it. can do it? I think we can do it. We can do it. I had the world's smallest salad for lunch. Same, and it was eleven dollars. Um, Actually, mine was twelve dollars because I put egg on it. Hard boiled egg. It came with egg. Did you just not come with egg? Yours came with egg. Mine comes with egg. Are you freaking kidding me? I paid extra for my egg. What kind of salad did you get? The same as yours. You shouldn't have paid for egg. egg I got to look at my receipt it. now. We both paid for. Um, we both got a chicken candy salad. Pine nuts or something. Candy pecans. Yeah. They were worth it. It was worth that 99 cents. It was, oh, man, they filled you up, too. They gave me, like, a whole jar of them. It was weird. <laughs> but uh, Becca was like, man, a salad sounds good. And I'm like, a salad does sound good. And O'Charlie's is, Becca, I have to tell you, <laughs> it's really close by, if you don't know. It's, like, three or four buildings down. Honestly, and she could have walked if she I, wanted to. I could to. have, but I get in the car, and Donnie calls me. And so I'm talking to him on the phone, and I... I get to Applebee's, which if you're from Morristown, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, it's like, I don't know, like a good 15 to 20 buildings past where I was supposed to be. And then I was like, oh, oh, that happened. Yeah. <sighs> Donnie, you don't call me you anymore. Spend, no, Donnie. Never. No, especially not when we're almost going live and I'm starving. Make live. sure I'm not in the car. Yeah. Yeah. But their salads are really good. If you go in, and I just was there a week ago and someone that was going with us ordered a salad it was literally as big as my laptop huge overflowing could be two meals and i popped the lid off of this little styrofoam container and it's like a little side salad but it was 11 dollars. i was so mad but of course i ate it because i was starving. um what's the drawer system that we have behind us these are yukon toolboxes toolboxes and they have a really nice wood top and they have wheels. They have wheels. Large, large, heavy duty. They were they were not they were not cheap, but for what you get, you get what you pay for. They were right around five hundred dollars, and I would pay that over and over again. They were they are very much worth it. Um, what's a good storage solution for multiple printers? Julie found us this awesome rolly cart thing that has um, our 
our massive sublimation printer on it and our other printer below. And it actually has another shelf that we're not util. No, yeah, we are. There's an extension cord on it. Um, Gotta have that extension but cord. But we can share a picture of it. Julie, do you remember where you got it? I think she got it's it from fine. Amazon, but I'm not sure. It's fine. Sometimes I worry about our Epson being on it because our Epson is probably 60 pounds. But it doesn't. Well, it had but like it a 100 pound good. weight limit or something, I think is okay, what we yeah. looked at. Yeah. Yeah, she's Ruthie, right. egg makes salad much better. Oh, 100%. you're not wrong. Yeah. 100%. I egg and cheese egg. on a bun. What kind of duh, 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 duh. what kind of alcohol markers do you all like? Sorry, it's not a food question. That's okay, Ellie Joe. Ellie Joe's mom. Excuse this, me. This is a crafting um, YouTube yeah, channel. It's, it's, you can ask craft so, questions. Those are, is it Moby? Let me try. From Target. Honestly, I just got them because there was a bunch of them for like $15 to $20. Mondo Llama? Mondo. Um, I haven't used a ton of them, but those are, those are good. Kat also got them. I believe Kat, do you like them? Let us know. Yes. Um, I got a Husky cart from home Depot and it even has a power strip on the side with USB slots. Yes. That's amazing. What if my cart in my craft room at home has a power strip on the side and I really like it. It has a light on it and it has a built in Ooh. pegboard Ooh. and storage up above. It's really handy for a small space because my craft room is actually a closet. So there's that. And it's in, in like the upstairs. So like the part the yeah, half going of like it. This. Yeah. You have to, it's a thing. But you know what? I, I make it work. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, is a professional. Yeah. We say that, oh my gosh, 10 times a day. Professional. <laughs> professional. Professional. Um, I love a big salad. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we still would love one. I could have eaten three of those. <laughs> oh. Uh, I have mine on a cart as well, and it's not very sturdy. It's also a pain to load them. Yeah, our, ours is not a pain at all. Um, and this one is super sturdy. I, Epson says to keep the printers close because it's not good for a Bluetooth connection. Yeah, it's yeah. five feet away. It's right there, which is good. Oh, Kat says she does like the alcohol pens, but she's only used them once because we've given her too many ideas, too many good ideas. Um, and what not enough problem. time. Not enough time. What a problem. Yeah. 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 I, it's actually amazing to me. Yeah, we have lots of great ideas, but uh, in, in our private Facebook group more than anything, I am so inspired because so many people post a, a wide variety. My mom, is mom here? I haven't seen her. I don't know. Um, when we first started the private Facebook group, I was like, share some of your quilts. And she didn't feel like she could because it wasn't cricket related. I was like, no, no, no. That's the point. We're crafters. Anything crafty. Share Crafts. it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah, Becca even got me to sew a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Um, just branching out here. We're just branching out. Whenever we get a request in the um, YouTube comment section, uh, like, hey, why don't you make this? Why don't you make that? We don't have to shut it down. We can explore that. And we can say, we would love to see if we can master this and be able to teach it to you. Because all that you guys are doing are challenging us to broaden our crafty horizons. And we love that. Um, we love learning so that we can then turn around and teach. Absolutely. This is my favorite group. Very family-like and friendly. Betsy, you're so sweet. We have accomplished our number one goal then. 100%. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Yeah. We always just want to be honest and genuine and... Family-like. Family-like. Yeah. Because you all are our family. When you hurt, we hurt. When we have triumphs, it's always usually because of you guys. And we're so thankful for that. Your mom's quilts are beautiful, Robin. That's true. Jane is very talented. Well, I should pressure her into making me the camper quilt that she's just made. I want it. I want it in O and L colors, basically, because that's what my camper is decorated in, or it's supposed to be. I sort of undecorated it. Oh. But anyway, you you could pressure her for me, and that would be fine. Yeah, it would be great. One thing I am curious to know, which you guys know us really well, I think it would be hilarious to have a challenge. Like you see those posts, and it's like expectation reality i think it would be hilarious to challenge our flock members on what the interior of our homes look like like, show, like what your goal like was show google images of what you guys think my, myself becca and anna's interiors of oh. our homes looks like oh well, they would have like a trash heap for mine no. <laughs> <laughs> like style like style like what, knowing me, what would you think the interior of my home would look like? Google plain and boring. 
<laughs> She's right. No, I'm not. Rachel's house She's is right. beautiful. No, it's not. It it's is. It's gray and cream. It's not my style, but it's beautiful. It's gray and cream. It's beautiful. And I have a couple of plants thrown around. It smells amazing in there. Everything is clean and tidy. You feel like, you just feel good when you're in Rachel's house. Yeah. And boring. Becca's house. Oh, you feel you feel overwhelmed, nice and clean sensory and happy overload because everything is such a fun color. Um, she painted. This was a while ago when you painted your bedroom, master bedroom doors. Yeah. Oh, I love that color. Here's my thing, Becca, which she's just a little older than me, just a little. But Becca has so much. She's just got the guts. She's got guts. I don't have guts to do things that Becca does. She's like, I'm gonna paint these two doors in my house. A very fun color. And I'm like, I couldn't do it. I'm like, it's like, paint. If I don't I like it, I couldn't do I it. I can paint over it. And then it. Becca does it. And I'm like, that is absolutely stunning. Still, I don't have it in me. Don't have it in me. <sighs> I just stay safe and boring in my uh, clean house that smells good, which is quite a compliment. Thank you. A stinky house is the worst kind of house. I'm sorry. Unless you're cooking. That's different. That's nice. Yeah. Anna's color scheme isn't too far off from Rachel's. It really isn't. It's not... Uh, it's because you have kids, Becca, and they always make home. They do make your home messy. But they do. You have to. My mom, she hosted my baby shower this past weekend, my family's baby shower. She took, there's a tray that's always by the door. It has her keys in it, dog treats, like things that show she lives there. She takes everything that shows she lives there and crams it in the laundry room. I love that. And then that. mom's like, Rachel, can you go grab this out of my car? And I'm like, yeah. So I go to get the keys and they're not where the keys are. And she goes, oh, they're in the laundry room. And I'm like, mom. What is wrong with mom, you? Houses are meant to be lived in. Yeah. They're, they are lived in. You, it, you know, if your house doesn't look like it's lived in, which sometimes mine doesn't, you know it's fake right off the bat. You're like, what's <clears throat> what's been going on yeah. in here? I mean, I, my house is my house is not sloppy by any no, means because I can't I can't handle that. But like, if you go into my because my bedroom is right off the living room, and if you go in there, you can guarantee that Beckett has either dropped his pants on my floor, <laughs> or there's some dog toy, or maybe even a kid toy somewhere in my floor. And I'm like, you know, sometimes it frustrates me, but then most of the time I look at it and say, you know what? One day I will miss seeing this in my floor. Like when my kids are grown and oh it's not there Those anymore. Like, yeah. So when I'm like yesterday we get home, I'm, I'm, I say this all the time. I can't even get in the house sometimes. And Beckett is undressed. <laughs> so I go to let the dogs out of the bathroom and I look the front door to go to the bathroom. And I look over where our stairs are to go up to their room. And he is undressing while he walks up the steps. So there's a shirt at the bottom of the steps, halfway up or an inside out pair of pants. And then I'm like, Beckett, he comes out running in his underwear. I'm like, what, what happened here? He was like, oh, oh, I forgot. I'm like, no, you didn't forget. I don't know. <laughs> it was but I will miss it. I will oh, miss seeing yes. random underpants laying on the floor. Little, little yeah. bitty underpants. Yeah. So cute. Jennifer, uh, what do you use to create a good smelling house? Everything I, they tell you not to do. Every, every fire hazard and thing you're not supposed to do. Um, I love me some, I'm sorry, I love me some Bath and Body Works candles. I, I do too. I am. I do really like essential oils. I do. But when company's coming or I have someone coming quickly, I, I don't think it works quick enough for me. Lighting the candle always works really quickly. I also have two, only two in my entire house, Airwick plugins, just two. I have one right next to the front door and one in the kitchen. And I keep them off until people are coming or I need it to smell good in there. Like after I've cooked something a little bit smelly, like some tacos or something that stinks up the house. Um, I know those are all no-nos and I'm sorry. I am very safe with them for sure, but I'm, I really like candles. I like candles. Hopefully Becca outgrows that a little as he gets older. It's very interesting. You would think that he, because it's not like I, I pick it up for him or I just let him leave it there. Every single day I'm like, Bex, pick it up. Pick it up. Like, I don't let him get away with it. It's the most interesting thing. Now, Beckett does have ADHD. And if he's not going to school, we don't give him his medicine. Um, he doesn't do amazing with transitions if he's on his medicine. Um, so, he, I mean, he does have an actual reason to maybe not be so focused on things that are ordinarily. Yeah. And yesterday he was not on his medicine. So, yeah. yeah. 
He's amazing. He's and such I, a I don't know baby. why you're judging me. Because I could, I could she, judge like seven she, things about she you read right an article. Now. She read an article while she was at work or watched something and about about plugins. And if I'm not mistaken, made Mark leave the bank to go home and unplug them all so that so that Granger and Sadie were safe in her house. Okay. Did you miss the part when I said they're not on all the time? <laughs> and I, and it doesn't if I'm not mistaken, also doesn't have was it lamps, Santa? Remind me. Remind me. Lamps are very unsafe. A lamp yeah. is what caught my parents' house on fire. Yes. It was a lamp. A nice lamp. Um, also, PSA, never, ever, ever, ever push furniture up against your uh, cords of any, of any kind. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a horrible thing to do. It wears out the wiring in there and will cause a house fire. So if your bed's pushed up against the lamp thing or you have a chest of drawers that's pushed up against a charging port or something... Pull those out because half an inch of space pulled out is really going to really gonna do a great thing. Another quick thing, if you're leaving for vacation or something, try and shut all the doors in your home. If for some reason, heaven forbid, a house fire does happen, every door that is shut is 15 extra minutes until the fire spreads to other rooms. So a door shut is a very, very, very good way to um, keep house fires at bay. Um, gives you, and again, 15 minutes to the fire department or 15 minutes to your pets that are stuck in the home are a, a big, big difference. So please do that as well. Um, that got dark anyways. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just have to educate yeah. you because you guys might not know that. Just some little some little things you can do to keep a safe home as well. Rach, yes. you're married. You don't live at home anymore. When you go no. to your mom's house, what's it like? Like, do you still like, do you still like get in her pantry? And like, is it still sort of like you live there? Okay, well, again, there's been so much fire talk, I do apologize. But the fire did happen at my parents' house one year after I was married. Yeah. So the house I grew up in for 20 years was not the house that I left. Right. I left that house, Right. My the house I grew up in. And now I visit a house that was technically built in 2020 because yeah. it was- It's completely you know, renovated. It's completely yeah. renovated. So I'm like, can I get some chips? And mom's like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to go potty. And mom's like, are you kidding? It feels like you're not, I don't know. I mean, listen, their house is stunning. It's beautiful. Stunning. It's beautiful. Um, but it doesn't feel like the house I grew up in, which is fine. It's a, it's a good thing. It was in rough shape. But it's interesting when I go to mom's house, because it, it is the house. Because you did grow up. Yeah. They, yeah, they built the house in 1976. They which is I love that. There's, there's talk of them selling the house and moving, and I may die. It, it may just, yeah. Anyway, um, when I go there, I, I, like, do whatever I want type of thing. But if my kids are like, Mommy, I'm hungry, I'm like, ask Nana if it's okay. Ask it's, Nana it's fine for me to pilferage, but not, not the kids. <laughs> not the kids. I'm going to go crack open a soda, but you, yeah. you better go. Of course, Mom's like, ask. oh, my gosh, stop. <laughs> go get what you want. But Now, it will always feel like home though yeah. no matter where I go or how many places I live also to the government that's still my home address yeah <laughs> I just can't that is home it's always going to be home the outside looks the same it's always home to me absolutely it's weird when your parents move from the house you lived in yeah I don't I think I'll have a, a small panic attack mainly because Dougie and Janny are hoarders and they're clean. They're clean, though. Like, oh, it's yeah, not very clean. They just like to keep things. And there's lots of space at their house to keep things. It's organized, but there's lots of stuff. So I can't imagine moving those things. Can't imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my mama B, she, uh, Becca got to meet her as well. She's a, love her. She's hilarious. She uh, is a bit of a hoarder, but she would have, she would absolutely wring my neck if I said that. She's really into antiques. She, owned an antique shop has a booth in an antique shop where she uh, sells antiques and they have a big property like 16 acres um, and she has a lot of things stored there and she said I do not want to leave all this stuff for my kids and my grandkids when I pass I have to get it cleaned out so she has actually been doing what she could to clean that out which is so nice of her to think of us even though that's not what we're going to be worried about, but she's worried about it. She's like, I can't leave this place a mess for them, but you know how it goes. And I said, I freaked out when they moved the light switch at the bottom of the stairs because it shouldn't have ever been moved. So mom and I did all this weird stuff when we left. Like <laughs> they, the trash can was all, we had this terribly ugly pink trash can and it was always under the sink in the kitchen. 
Well, we move out and it's been there for 30 years. I still try to open that stupid door to throw the trash away. <laughs> why would you move the trash can? Now they got one that's not ugly, but. Well, that's probably why then. Good grief. That's probably why. Uh, Becca, any update about our camping trip in June? How many people so far? I need to do, I, I have the, the little count, cal not calendar, the little map mapped out. And I have one more friend that I need to add to it because they've added since. Um, I think it's around 25 members wow. total. Yeah. And so their families really and their pets. Yes. And yeah. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, super exciting. How fun is that going to be? And guys, it's going to be here before we know it, by the way. It's almost March. It's going to be here. Yeah. Lickety split. But Rachel, it's almost March. My kids will be out of school in two and a half months, basically. Oh my God. Then they'll be here full time. That'll be fun. I love those kids. Charlie will be here too, though. He will be here. Too. Yes. Um, Fallon, yesterday, um, bragging on Fowl, she was drawing us beautiful pictures. First of all, Becca would like to brag. She knows the rainbow in order. It's bizarre. And I had no, I mean, I, I'm glad. All the colors in order. I didn't know what Roy G. Biv meant until just a couple of years ago, and I'm not ashamed to say that. No one told me, apparently. Um, but she's that, five. She should be in pre-K. Yes. Fallon came over. She drew me a beautiful picture of a family picture: me, James, baby Charlie, and Fallon. And your mom. Your mom. My mom in was in there. Your mom is in that picture. Hilarious. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know who Dad is. Yeah. But, and she said, Rachel, how do you spell your name? I told her one time how to spell my name, and just letter by letter, R A C. And she was spelling it apparently all day. I told her once how to spell my name. Yeah, we went to She's dinner and she crying. told she told Wayne how to spell. I was like, well, at first she wrote it again and I thought that it was written somewhere and she was just like copying it. She was like, no, I just remember that. And so I didn't believe her like a great mom. And so I, I covered like everything that could have Rachel's name on it and made her do it again. And she totally did and it. And she did it. She did it. And a homeschool kid. You darn right. Yeah. You darn right. It's officially 222. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. That someone someone should buy a membership or something to commemorate hurry, this hurry, event. Hurry, hurry. You yeah. have one minute. Yeah. Hurry. Buy a membership. We'll shout you out. Yeah, absolutely. We'll you out. So it is 2-22-22-2-22. There we go. I think that's as good as we're going to get. Maybe 22 people should buy a membership. <gasps> or, or that's just, a fantastic idea. I mean, I'll settle for two, but. 22 is even better. Yeah. 22 is great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Well, there we go. That Your last day of school is June 21st, Shauna. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, we get out. I, I actually kind of hate it. We get out really early here in East Tennessee. Um, I think their last day is somewhere around the 25th or something of May, but we go back. Um, we go back. Sorry, Wayne just texted me and I lost my train of thought. We go back on August like 1st. So I think that's way too yeah, early. I honestly wish we kind of got out in June and then went back in September because the, the months are warmer then. Yes. They so are. you can enjoy more of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that wasn't very hard guys. That wasn't very hard. So you know us, we can chit chat till the cows come home. True. We absolutely can. True. Um, does anybody purchase? No, no one. Not one person. Guys, it's $20 <laughs> off. <laughs> Go get the yearly membership. Maybe everyone that's here with us has the membership because I'm seeing lots. I don't, I don't really see hardly anyone that I don't personally. Fine. I think the least you guys could do is like the video. Yeah, you could like the video. That's so you funny. You guys know I got to pull your leg. You guys are fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much for such a wonderful live. I hope you got some really great storage solutions. I'm going to do this a couple more times because I really like rolling this thing around. So pretty. It's so fun so to do that. Um, so I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. You're going to see me tomorrow making a really fun craft. Guys, I'm glow forging. That, that's not a, that's not how you say that. I'm glow forging. I'm using the glow forge tomorrow. I'm also going to be using some UV resin and some glitter. Um, if you want to see all of that happen, be here tomorrow at 1 p.m. It's going to be a super fun day. Can't wait. Barry said you told us you can't. Yeah, if you're a Founding Flock member, you can't because I'm getting ready to share a link with you over in the private Facebook group. So that's totally fine. Yes. Um, uh, so, something really quickly. Betsy says she's going to join after the live. So that's exciting. Betsy, we'll give you a shout out already. Um, if you are looking, if you are joining now and are looking for Flock number information, hold out for a couple of weeks. When we transferred our website over, 
basically there, there are two different things and I'm giving you more information than you probably even care about. Um, products like courses are sold in one way where memberships are sold in a different way. So when we moved over and kind of combined the two things, um, it messed with our order numbers, which we were using as flock numbers. So now they've sort of reset. Yeah. So we're going to be, if you had a, a flock number already, you will still have that flock number. So if you are a founding flock member, you'll still have that. Um, but what we're going to be doing is coming up with a really cool way to showcase your all's flock numbers under your dashboard. So there'll be a little badge with your flock number. How cute so is if that you're, gonna be? if you're just joining and wondering, give us a couple of weeks and then you'll see that and you won't have to worry about it. Yeah. So give us, yeah. give us just a little bit of time. We're working on it. Absolutely. But we're, we're so happy you all are here. I thank you all, all those who are flock members. Thank you. All those who are about to be, thank you. Yes. And I hope that you learned some stuff and got motivated about organizing today because organizing is hard to do. But again, be here tomorrow at 1 p.m. I'm going to have the glow forge. We're going to make some really fun crafts and hopefully uh, answer any questions you have about the glow forge, about some UV resin. We've got a lot of fun stuff we're doing tomorrow. I can't wait to see you there. So we will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Bye guys.